Hey everybody, welcome to episode 68 of the Ask Dapp Show, where we answer your Volkswagen Audi questions. On this episode, we talk about cracked turbo manifolds and OBD11 and affecting your warranty. Danny Santana via YouTube says, I have a Mark V GTI with the FSI engine. I found a large crack in the hot side of my KO3 and was wondering about replacing the hot side casting or going KO4. Since the car is my daily, am I doing any damage to the CHRA because of the crack? Danny, so you have an FSI engine and you have a cracked manifold. Uh, so the FSI engine has the manifold and turbo are all one piece. So that was not really intended to be a service part. Uh, there's a couple options that I think might be something you might want to look at. Uh, since it was never intended to be serviced, you can't buy just the hot side. So you can probably try to possibly go down the road of finding a used turbo and maybe swapping it on. Depending on mileage, that may or may not be worth it. You also can look at maybe trying to find somebody who's um, a solid fabricator who can just weld it for you. Uh, that's an option. It's probably not a long-term solution. Maybe it will, maybe it won't hold. Uh, but it could be something temporary to obviously get you down the road and keep you going. The turbo most likely would have to come off to make that happen. Or you can just replace the whole turbo with a KO3 unit. Uh, we offer the Bork Warner one. You know, I'll link to it here where you can check that out as that's an option as well. And depending on mileage and the amount of effort you're putting into swapping turbos and what your situation is like, and if you're planning on keeping the car long term, that may determine whether you go down the road of you know fixing it uh, or you know, actually replacing it and then continue to drive it for extended period of time. So hopefully that answered your question and you can fix your manifold. Uh, one note I did want to make about if it could damage anything. The only major thing I see damage about, depending on the crack, would be the amount of heat that's letting out and depending on where the crack is and if there's anything in that general vicinity that could be exposed to that heat where, for example, like wiring or connectors or anything like that, if it's too close to that crack, and all that hot exhaust gas is just flowing straight out of that crack right at something, it might melt it, causing more damage. So that's going to be your major thing. The one thing I'll say is a crack probably will get worse over time. Jerry via shopdap.com says, My 06 Passat is sending out the camshaft positioning sensor, but it kind of shakes as if it had a flat tire and then shuts down, starts up, but won't move and drive when pressing the gas pedal. So what you're describing sounds like it could be related to a timing problem. It could be a bad cam sensor, it could be a bad crank sensor, it could be an actual timing problem where if you haven't replaced a timing belt, which is important on an FSI engine, that it could have jumped time, uh, causing timing issues. It also could be the timing chain on the back of the head where those cam, uh, the cams are tied together by a timing chain and the adjuster itself. Uh, as well as the cam chain adjuster, which is why it's possibly it's sporadic and the issue happens. So you're going to have to dig into that further to diagnose exactly what's going on, but I would highly recommend not continuing to drive the car under those circumstances because if something is bad, it could end up nuking the engine if whatever you have timing related that's bad actually lets loose for good. So make sure you address that. If you don't have the skill set to diagnose that timing problem, you should definitely bring it to somebody to have them help you so you avoid a uh, potential catastrophic failure. Sean McLaren via YouTube says, Hi guys, I was wondering if I use a custom app on OBD11, will it affect my warranty on my Mark 7? Will it come up with a flag? Please help, as I'm eager to download the app and buy the port chip. All right, Sean, so it sounds like you may have some confusion about uh, the capabilities of things like OBD11 and VAGCOM versus actual uh, performance software. So let me just dive into that real quick. Uh, OBD11 and VAGCOM are scan tools that give you the ability to adjust settings in the car. That's uh, convenience features like windows up and down and a bunch of other things related to that. Uh, if you ever, anybody has questions about apps and stuff like that available for OBD11, you can download the software for free and then enter different models to see what's available for that model without having to actually buy anything just to, if you want to see specifically what's available for your application. Uh, but that stuff is really kind of small tweaks to your car. And then you have performance software, which is made by companies like Unitronic uh, and other, we're a Unitronic dealer, but there are other similar manufacturers who offer performance software. Those two things are not the same. They're very separate um, and not all related. Uh, let's dive into, and 
if you have had, or if you're concerned about performance software and dealers knowing about that, we've covered a bunch of stuff around that. I'll link to the stuff we've, different places we've talked about stuff like that in the description below uh, where you can check that out. About the OBD11, uh, this is something that I think is something interesting to touch on. Um, basically, change anything you change in a vehicle could potentially cause warranty implications because you're modifying the vehicle to a way it was never intended to be used. Um, in the circumstance of things like OBD11 coding, if let's say, um, you know, for example, the, the remote windows up and down feature, if you were to use that coding, and go in and have a warranty issue in your dealer, there are very few circumstances where they're ever going to even say that, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not even gonna know that it's even in there unless they tested it. Uh, they would very unlikely ever be a scenario where they blame the coding on it, unless, uh, you know, we've had people who have bought OB11s and then just start changing things until something on their car doesn't work anymore. In which case, that would obviously create some scenarios there. Someone would have to help you back out all that stuff, all the things that you've done, whatever it was, uh, which I don't ever recommend. Don't, don't just change stuff if you don't know what it's going to do. That's never going to work out well. Um, if you're going down the road of warranty stuff, I just can't think of many scenarios where that would be a problem. If you changed a bunch of settings in a module and they couldn't get it to change back, so you had to replace the entire control module, that wouldn't be covered under warranty. So, you know, for example, a body control module, if you change a bunch of stuff around lighting and then couldn't ever get the lighting to work properly again because you, you changed a bunch of settings that you can't figure out how to back out, that could be a scenario where you have to buy a body control module. Um, but would that affect your engine warranty or anything like that? No, it, it would definitely not create any scenarios where that could be a problem. Um, so hopefully that answers your question and gives you a little more clarity on that subject. Shiny Parts via YouTube says, Big power on a front-wheel drive car? Surely if they're putting this amount of work into it, it should be upgraded to a four-wheel drive setup. We've had a few people on our Project Mark 5 build, for anybody who's not familiar, where you have one of the guys who works here, Max, is building a big turbo Project Mark 5 car. We're kind of going through the install, checking out a bunch of the different stuff and going through it. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link to the playlist here where you can check out that build series. Uh, but we've had a couple people mention how you know it's ridiculous putting that much power in a front-wheel drive car and why wouldn't you do xyz whether it's four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive or you know uh, rear-wheel drive whatever uh so here's my personal thoughts on that everybody has obviously can mod whatever they have and most times people are going to mod what's available to them but more importantly you mod what you want to mod so uh, to say that, yes, it's front-wheel drive, so it's not the optimal setup to have a big horsepower car, yeah, that's true, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have all-wheel drive. You're not trying to make a race car, per se, and even if you were trying to make a race car, there are classes for front-wheel drive cars only. So um, if we went down the road of modding cars in that pretense, there would only be a handful of cars that anybody would ever mod, which would be, you know, you, you'd see nothing but Miatas that are modded and... E30 BMWs because they're affordable and they're good chassis and they're good platforms to build on and whatever and then everybody would be modding the same car and it, nothing would be interesting. So modding cars is all about personalization, interesting stuff and uh, most platforms aren't going to start out as perfect. Some cars are too heavy, some cars are not, you know, you could, you could say things like the Hellcat which is a really cool car is too heavy. Why would you put that much power in a car that's that heavy? Why wouldn't you put it in a lighter body car that would make a better handling vehicle. You know, there's a lot of arguments you can make on this stuff. And for me, I always say, go into the pretense of mod what you have, assuming it's reasonable. You know, the one thing I do think is there are exceptions to this, for example, like two liter engines in um, most Volkswagens, the two liter non-turbo versions, people who want to mod them, because until you spend a boatload of money, you're not making any power. So it's super impractical. So that would be one time I don't generally recommend modding those cars for power. But if you want to take that car and lower it and do some, uh, you know, appearance mods and lighting and that type of stuff, you know, modding vehicles is about making your car your own. So that's my personal thoughts on it. And uh, you know what, actually, everybody who has, watches this, feel free in the comments below, leave your feedback of what you think about that. Yusuf via shopdap.com says, 
I'm thinking about upgrading my 2016 Mark 7 GTI performance from stock to stage 2, but I'm wondering what upgrades I should do too to keep the engine and car protected, specifically from overheating because the weather here is hot most of the year, mostly above 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly, what is there any upgrades to increase the safety? Yusuf, uh, being in a hot place obviously is going to be harder on most vehicles. Uh, mods that you would want to do in an exceptionally hot country, really a lot of the same mods would apply that you would do here. Things like an, an intercooler would be an important one, especially there because you're going to maximize the power potential, but that's less of a uh, fail-safe system and more of a upgrade to uh, cool down your intake charge. You could also go down the road of uh, water meth injection. Uh, that would be obviously another great way to cool down your intake charge. Uh, the only other thought that I had about this would be an external oil cooler. I don't know if it's a necessity in those type of places. We haven't done any testing to, you know, say one way or the other that if that's even something that you would need. It probably depends on the demand that you put on the car. Maybe under normal dry, driving circumstances, you wouldn't need to. But if you were to track a car into those conditions, maybe you would need an external oil cooler. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody that currently that makes an external oil cooler, but it could be something that happens in the future, or if you want to go down the road of having something custom made, that's an option as well. So oil coolers would be one thing. Uh, safety, I'm not sure if you were referring to safety of the vehicle or safety of uh, on the engine of the vehicle, but that stuff covered engine more or less. Uh, safety of the vehicle, the one thing I always say is if you're upgrading the car, brakes should be probably one of the first things you look at upgrading if you're going to be driving it in a aggressive or spirited fashion because obviously stopping the car is important which tires could go hand in hand with that so hopefully that answers your question and good luck and happy modding thank you for watching episode 68 of the ask that show where we answer your volkswagen audi questions if you have any questions or comments about the questions answered in this show be sure to leave in the comments below if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it